Okay, folks, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Holland from uh, Ulster University's Market Engagement uh, Department. Um, thank you for joining us today for our future applicant webinar for social work. Um, these webinars, as you may already know, form a part of our wider uh, range of future applicant webinars that we have put together during the COVID-19 uh, situation and lockdown. Uh, today's webinar is going to be hosted by my colleague, um, Sean Roddy, who's a lecturer at the School of Applied and Social Policy uh, Sciences at McGee campus. We're just waiting for uh, Sean to come in now um, as we speak. Um, Hello, how are you doing? Yes, Sean, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep, yeah. Okay, so um, of course, I'm just introducing the webinar to folks who have just joined us. Um, as I say, Sean will be hosting the webinar in the next uh, few minutes. And, and just to let you know, these webinars um, form a part of a wider range of webinars, which we have over the next two to three, probably four weeks, maybe beyond, uh, we're not sure. And they will cover general uh, topics, um, including very subject-specific webinars um, in place of the traditional physical um, presentations that uh, members of uh, our team within marketing engagement would deliver as we go out and visit schools during this time. So hopefully this plugs the gap. It's another fantastic way for you, specifically if you're interested in uh, certain subjects, to learn more, and especially directly from uh, our academic colleagues uh, in social work about uh, what social work is uh, in terms of uh, teaching, facilities, uh, the course content, uh, obviously careers associated with social work as well. And that goes right throughout all webinars that we are hosting over the next couple of weeks. So we'll get those out to you if you have registered for any, and of course, including today's as well. Now, part of today's webinar, uh, you are able to submit uh, questions uh, to be answered uh, using the Q&A section or facility at the bottom of your screen, whether you're using your mobile, iPad, tablet, PC, um, or whatever other device you have. There's also a chat uh, function as well. Um, I will go off screen uh, while Sean is uh, going through the webinar and hopefully be able to answer any of the questions that you put to me. Um, if there are any outstanding, uh, or at the end, if we want to go through any that have been, or we think that are useful to share, we will do that um, at two o'clock uh, for the last 15 minutes of this particular uh, session as well. So I'm just going to pass over to Sean uh, now to um, share the screen and take us through um, the webinar, Sean. So if you're there, um, over to you. Thanks very much for coming on today's webinar. I'm, I'm trying to uh, select the camera, but every time it says the my host has disabled my camera. Okay, I'll sort you out. If you just want to share your screen, I'll get that sorted for you, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Hello everyone, uh, you're very welcome. Um, as Jonathan says, my name is uh, Sean Roddy and I'm a, a lecturer in social work uh, up here in McGee, up in the Northwest. Um, I've been a lecturer for the last two years, um, but prior to lecturing in social work, uh, I was a practicing social worker um, and my experience sort of covers areas mainly around child and family and mental health. Um, all the staff at the social work department McGee are all qualified social workers and we all have extensive experience working within the field. Um, some of us have experience working in the youth justice system, maybe some of us experience work on probation, work on older people, uh, working with learning disabilities, um, working on mental health addictions. So the team is made up of probably, there's probably about 14 all together. And, um, and with our experience, we're able to deliver uh, the program uh, at McGee. So as I said, McGee, the McGee campus is located in the heart of Derry, stroke London Derry. Um, it's about an hour and a half from Belfast, but with the new A6 road uh, upgrades, 
that seems to be reducing because any time I have to travel to Belfast, I seem to be getting there a bit quicker. Um, and with the potential new development of the, the A5 to Dublin, uh, that seems to be improving. Um, the, the university in McGee has got quite a history. Uh, it's been there for 150 years, and if you've seen in the first slide, the really old building would remind you of something from Harry Potter, like the Hogwarts building. We have over 5,000 students, and there's over 60 uh, courses available. But uh, what we've sort of benefited from over the last number of years has been increased investment around our new teaching block, which has got the state-of-the-art facilities in terms of teaching, large classrooms, and even small sort of breakout rooms, which facilitate maybe 10 to 15 students. And we find them very beneficial for doing those really small uh, teaching. Um, the recently refurbished New Students Union, and we're hoping to open our new graduates entry medical school uh, in the next year or two. But it's a really sort of contentious political debate at the minute about money and paying for that. So, um, there's always controversy about the name of our city, but the, the one that seems to be keep on coming more recently is calling it legendary. Um, we've probably, as a city, we've probably the biggest Halloween festival in, um, in the world, I think it's been described as recently. So if you potentially want to become a student uh, at McGee, um, you can always look forward to that. And what also has put Derry on the map recently is the, the famous Derry Girls. So, uh, we've won our, our murals in the, in the city centre, so going to be dedicated to them. So the, the BSc Honours in Social Work um, is what we deliver. And suppose the areas of social work um, that you need to consider is that social workers work with a number of people at any one time. So this is, this is what we would describe as a caseload. Um, and I was trying to think about uh, an analogy. And it's nearly like um, when uh, teachers have a form class in school um, and, there's, and they have all those students. So that would be like your caseload. And with like any group of students, students may need their, their form tutor at different times, and some of them will need their, their form tutor at increasing time. So when you're a social worker, the same thing happens. You might have a caseload of maybe 50 or 60 uh, clients, um, but not all of them maybe need your help and support at that one time, but maybe you, you, you keep them in terms of you, you maintaining the records. Um, but with all things in life, uh, our lives change all the time, and with service users, sometimes uh, things become more and more difficult, so maybe they need need more help and help, um, more everyday support. So the day-to-day -day work of a social worker involves assessing people's needs. Um, and there's one of the things that I always remembered as a, as a student social worker, somebody told me, there's a big difference between need and want. Um, so when you're working with people, people might think, right, I, I want this, but in terms of need, and some, suppose it's one of the things that I've learned as a social worker is to differentiate what those are. Um, we try to work uh, and, and look on what people's strengths and wishes are. So as, as opposed to telling people what they do, we always try and work with people and try and find out, well, what do they want? And we work around their strengths as opposed to always looking at people's deficits and their weaknesses, but what's the good things going on? We work with individuals and families to, to help them make changes and solve problems. Because the idea about social work is that you need to work yourself out of a job. You want to get to a stage where people don't need you. Um, so when you teach people skills um, about helping and supporting themselves or finding other methods of support, maybe within their community, within their families, with, where there is a lot of resources. So that's one of the things that social workers do. Um, we also need to identify what our limitations are. So we always make recommendations or referrals to other services and agencies, um, maybe ones that are best suited to meet service users' needs. Um, and one of the things about social work is that we need to keep detailed records um, so that if anybody questions anything, but also because we have so much information coming in sometimes about people, we need to refer back to it and think, right, what, what was the decision that we made and how did that help the person in the past? So the, the different roles of social worker, uh, as I mentioned about our members of staff here in McGee, um, family and childcare, um, seems to be one of the sort of most prominent uh, areas. So these involve child protection, um, looked after children, uh, looked after children or maybe children that maybe their parents or their extended family might be able to look after them. 
So uh, maybe social workers get involved and we try and find alternative ways to care for those children. Uh, another area is fostering and adoption. Um, or kinship, which seems to be being promoted more and more. So if children can't live with their parents, we always turn to their families uh, and ask their families to help and support. Uh, education welfare. So every uh, education welfare officer in Northern Ireland is a social worker. Um, another area is children's disability, um, family support and family intervention. Uh, an increasing area within social work is around mental health. Um, and I suppose it's splitted into two different areas. Um, it's, there's mental health services for under 18s, which is CAMS, Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service. And I have a substantial uh, experience of working within CAMS. I worked there for uh, probably about five years altogether. Um, and then adult mental health services, which I worked on priority working in CAMS. Um, other areas is crisis response, addictions and substance misuse, um, and inpatient mental health treatment. Um, other areas include learning disability, physical disability, older people, and dementia. And if you think about our aging population, there's more and more people living um, for longer. So there's more and more services that are needed for older people. Um, hospital social work um, is, is another area, um, working in hospitals to try and help and support people when they go home again. So you try to get them out of, out of hospital and back into their communities. Uh, probation. Uh, a lot of young people are always interested in criminology and working with offenders, but it's pertinent to note that every probation officer in Northern Ireland is a social worker. So if you want to work um, within probation or criminal justice, you need to train as a social worker. And um, what we've found is that students in the past have went and done a degree in criminology and think that they work, can work in uh, probation, but that doesn't happen. So, um, and a lead on from probation is maybe working with offenders. Um, when they're in bail hostels or also working within the homeless communities. Questions and myths. Um, over the years when we go out to students uh, in schools and even in further education, there's a couple of things that have sort of, sort of sprung to mind. So that's why I sort of put down these myths. Um, my teachers say I can't uh, get into social work straight from school. That is uh, not true. We've quite a number of students who have recently started there in September and they've all come straight from secondary school. So the take on it is that uh, we take students straight from school and we take students of all ages. Um, we're, we're more interested in your understanding and compassion than how many birthdays you have. Um, and what we have found um, is that the students who come straight from school work really well in the course and they have a very good insight. And we find that uh, young people in particular and maybe experience uh, a lot of difficulties at home or in their background and they can really apply this in terms of their studies and they make excellent social workers. Uh, my friend says social work is just for girls. Um, obviously not, I'm talking to you and I'm a social worker. Um, so don't listen to your friend. For some reason more women apply than men but social work is about your ability to form human connections with another human being. So it's irrespective of your gender. Um, Every year in the, in the class, in the undergraduate degree, there's probably about 65 students and there's probably about between 10 and 15 males. So we're getting more and more males, and which is good. Um, so is social work a good job? Um, it's an excellent career. It can be very hard work and it can be stressful, but it is very rewarding. So that's one thing to consider. Um, so the opportunities to study. So all social workers trained in Northern Ireland come out with the same qualification. So sometimes people think because the, the degree is offered in Queen's that it's a different degree. It's not. It's the same degree. And when you qualify, people don't care where you've studied. The fact is that you come out with the, the qualification, and that's the main thing. So there's three options. There's the three-year full-time course at UU and McGee. Um, the next option is that you apply but you can study in Belfast Met College or Southwest College in Dungannon. So you study there for the first two years and then the final year is completed at UU McGee. But when you break that down, your final year at, at McGee, you're in from September until um, December and then you're out in placement. So in fact, you're only, only in McGee for 12 weeks if you live further away. Um, and then for those uh, who have already 
attend a degree. Um, you can do a two-year full-time accelerated route at McGee. So for some people, they might be considering social work, but they might be considering it all down the line. So if you go and do a degree in sociology, psychology, or criminology, or social policy, or health and social policy, in three years' time, you can apply to do the two-year fast track. So academic subjects studied include introduction to social work practice, social policy, which is very important because a lot of the decisions we make in terms of how to respond to people is guided by government legislation and policy. Psychology, which looks at how individuals behave. Law, which is a very much a significant part of social work because a lot of the decisions we make are around pieces of legislation. Sociology, um, and then which we sort of pride ourselves on as service users groups and settings where we actually bring service users in to be part of the teaching. Um, preparation for practice learning. So this is a, a module in the first year. So it actually helps students develop their communication skills so that they can go out in placement and actually work with people. Um, and this is what we call a prerequis prerequisite module and that you have to pass it in order to go out in placement. Um, but this module is very intense and in that you have two tutors and a small group of maybe 14 students and you're doing a lot of one-to-one -one work every week, recording yourselves and looking at how you respond to questions and how you ask questions. It's very good and a lot of students really, really enjoy it and they think it's really beneficial. Um, so the academic subjects, they provide students with a theory and knowledge base. Uh, they need to practice as a social worker and then um, you can apply that theory and knowledge and the practice. So, and this is where the practice comes in. So over the three-year degree, or even over the two-year degree, you've got two placements. Um, the first placement is at the start of your second year on the course, and it's 85 days in duration. So you go out, um, we find the placement based on your needs and what your learning requirements are, and you be in that placement Monday to Friday, five days a week um, from, if you're doing a three-year degree, the first placement starts around August time in your second year and you're right out until Christmas. The final placement is 100 days and that's in your third year and you go out just after Christmas in your third year. Um, it's usually around January the 7th or 8th and you're out until the end of May and it's again five days a week. So when you work out in terms of semesters and how much time you're in university, if you do the three-year degree, you're actually a third of your degree is out in placement. If you do the two-year degree, half your degree is out in placement. So it's very important. Um, and when you're out in placement, there's a practice teacher who helps and supports you. So students can be placed anywhere in Northern Ireland, but we aim to place students within one hour travel distance from their home. Placement settings could include statutory or voluntary placements and you work with all service user groups, families, adults, children. So you could be in child protection, adult addictions, mental health teams, it's just women's aid. There's a variety of placements. Sometimes students can ask for a preference, but uh, we might not always meet the preference. So the requirements at the moment is three Bs at A-level or equivalent, GCSE math, C or above, but they've changed that now to equivalent. So if you've got, uh, Level two maths, that's, that's accepted. We also accept we need GCSE English, C or above or equivalent. And the way you apply, you apply through UCAS and you put on a personal statement. Up until this year, you had to do an, an additional social work statement. That's highly likely that that's going to be removed. So when you put on your UCAS personal statement and if it suits, then you'd be uh, invited for an interview. And the interview is usually probably about 10 or 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, you're asked six questions and it's scored. Uh, any students who, who meet the, the cutoff are considered for a place on the degree. But it's worth noting um, that it is, uh, it's very competitive to get on social work, um, but don't let that put you off because if you're good enough, you will get on it. So this is the important thing. It's the, the tuition fees and bursaries, um, and if there's any parents that are considering this. Um, so fees for Ulster are £4,275 each year, 
and there's a wee asterisk beside that because that's subject to change and usually it's the the Northern Ireland executive that sets that. If you were going over to England, uh, to some of the universities, it's £9,000 each year. So already if you're staying at home, you're saving maybe over £4,000 each year. Um, but everybody who applies and is successful to get on the degree in social work, they're given a, a Department of Health incentive of £4,000 every year, plus £500 expenses every year. So it's £4,500. So if you lived close enough or you're willing to travel, you could actually come out at the end of it with a degree with no debt, which is really unheard of nowadays. That £4,000 bursary, I think there's certain criteria. You have to be a resident of Northern Ireland. So anybody from the South, I don't know what way it works. I don't think you're entitled to it. So the thing about it is, um, is that and you can come out with no debt, but people always question, will I get a job? And I'll just give you an example. All our students who graduated in July 2019 have jobs. So, but they sort of put it really up to date. I was speaking to one of my students yesterday who just graduated. We had to graduate them quickly this year for the COVID-19, so they're out actually on the front line. And she's meeting one of the trusts now this Saturday, and they've offered her three different jobs. So she can choose where she's going and she doesn't even have to do an interview. If you apply to get on the course and in three years time, I don't know if that's going to be the same, but um, all our students last year and all our students who have graduated this year already have jobs. The starting salary for social work is band five within the health service and it's £22,795. And anytime I talk to young people, they always say, what, what's that in my hand? And when you take out taxes and national insurance, it's £1,400 in your hand every month, starting off. But within social work, once you complete your first year, you jump up under the next salary band, which is band six, and you're on £27,500. So it's £1,700 in your hand every year. And then with the health service, you go up increments every year. So after 10 years, you're up to £36,280. So, and that equates to 2200 but a lot of my friends who I qualified with, and about like myself, within five years, we were maybe going up to that, that uh, year 10 salary because we were going up under the next band when you were given more responsibilities. So social work is very much, uh, it's a good career and there's plenty of opportunities in terms of change and where you want to go to. So one of the things that we sort of rely a lot on is the feedback from our students. And this is Jordan who has just uh, qualified. He actually qualified there on Monday. Um, and he was saying that social work at Ulster has allowed him to not only develop professionally, but personally through developing skills such as improved communication, problem solving, empathy, teamwork, and time management to date, but a few. And that's one of the things about social work is that you develop skills as a social worker, but you also develop a lot of skills that you can then transfer to other careers or other areas of social work. And like for me, um, my career path has led me down the road of education and training. Even prior to coming on to being a lecturer in social work, I've done a lot of training within the trusts, done a lot of work with education welfare, um, with staff that worked in uh, residential children's homes and delivered a lot of training around substance misuse. So that's one of the things that I felt that there's skills that are not only applicable within social work, So I think there's going to be uh, a video now. I don't know if uh, Jonathan can hear me. Can he start the video? Hi, Roddy. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Um, the the video that was created, is it? Yes, what I'll do is I'll, I'll share my screen, okay? Yeah. And, um, We'll push back over to mine for the video, if that's okay, folks. So if you give me a wee second. Um...
Well, where do we start? We are constantly striving to improve the lives of our students with continued investment in state-of-the-art teaching, research and support facilities. We are a global university with over 1,000 international students from over 100 different countries. We have 185,000 alumni worldwide. Steeped in history and culture, this once divided city is now flourishing with plenty to do for the young and the old. With award-winning careers development centres on every campus, the university will ensure that you're ready and supported to make that next step. With two placements as part of your degree, both you and your employer can be confident in your ability. With the help of the Higher Education Achievement Report that each student receives, it couldn't be easier to show your achievements, whether it's for employers or just for bragging. Right. Our courses are designed with your career in mind, working with employers and the Northern Ireland Social Care Council, the professional regulatory body. This ensures that the skills, knowledge and experience you gain match those of the social work profession. It's not all about studying though. Ulster University is the leading university for sport, so there's plenty to get involved in. There are a variety of different societies too, including the Stand Up for Social Work Society, the largest on the McGee campus. If you have the compassion and commitment required for social work, then we at Ulster can help hone your skills and knowledge so you can join this worthwhile and rewarding profession. Social work needs you. Brilliant, Jonathan. Thank you. Anything else you want to add to that there? I know it was a wee bit glitchy at the start. Uh, I, there was a number of emails coming into my uh, laptop there, and sometimes that uh, plays havoc with um, the video. But is there anything else you want to add there before we move on to um, Q&A? No, I, I just want to say that if anybody has any even questions on down the line, they can contact me because I'm, I'm the course director for the, the, the Fast Track course. But I work very closely with my colleague on, on the undergraduate course. Um, so we're here to help and support. And as you can see from the video, there was no expense spared when we've got uh, an international actor like James Nesbitt on there. Uh, and yourself, of course. Of course, yeah. Okay, we have a number of questions here. Um, are tuition fees paid by the department or do you pay tuition fees yourself and get bursary in addition? Right. You don't, uh, the department does not pay the tuition fees. You pay them yourselves because the, the actual bursary might come in around like the start of December and I think your fees have to be paid before that. So what you can do is you actually pay your fees or get a loan or go to the credit union or whatever way or you might get student finance or something like that and pay your fees. When you get the bursary in, it's up to you what you do with it because it's your, it's your money then. So if you want to pay back the loan that you got for your fees, but I know a number of students and they've been very slick in this and that they paid their fees and as soon as they got the bursary, they paid off the loan that they got either from their parents, grandparents or the credit union or something. So when they come out at the end of it, they have no debt and they're walking on their full-time job. So it's... Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's, it's very much a personal decision. Everybody is eligible for uh, attrition fee loan from Student Finance FBI if you're from... Uh, obviously, um, Northern Ireland or uh, EU at the moment, uh, outside of GB. Um, but typically speaking, here for NI and uh, um, and 
you are anybody who's uh, eligible for that uh, tuition free loan, that gets paid directly to the university. Yeah. And um, thereafter, of course, it's up to you to say what you want to do with your bursary. So I hope that answers that question. Another question here is Are there any opportunities to study social work on a part time basis or through a trust sponsored program? Not at the moment. Um, we did have a five year part time program but with very little take up on it. Um, in the past, I know the trust used to do um, like a social work trainee program. There doesn't seem to be anything at the minute in that. It might come on down the line in a few years time because in terms of workforce planning, the Department of Health don't have enough social workers. And that's why there's 200 and, 260 places every year between ourselves and Queens and Belfast Met and Southwest College and Dungannon. We qualify 150 social workers from McGee every year in Queens, qualify 110. Okay, um, moving on then. Um, someone here is uh, at Abigail in my A-levels. I have one A-level at B-Tech and at Cambridge Technical. Would this have any effect on entry requirements? Now, I can answer that because obviously the university uh, looks across all qualifications and O'Shawn will probably come in here as well. Um, and if the Cambridge Technical is eligible, um, along with your BTEC and A-level, it will be given uh, equal consideration, as will access courses, straightforward A-levels, and so on. So you should have confidence in that. I don't know, Sean, if you want to add to that. Yeah, and there's a lot of questions come in sometimes, and I might know the specifics around them, but our admissions team, based up in McGee, are absolutely fantastic, and they know the ins and outs. And even for people who are wondering, you know, about the two-year fast track one as well, is my degree relevant? But um, unlike other subjects, social work doesn't ask for specific A-levels. Um, and that's sometimes a, an advantage. Um, so it doesn't matter what your, what your A-levels are, your BTECs are, um, it, they're all, they're, they can all be applied and your learning can all be applied. So, yeah, and, and, and uh, towards the end of this webinar, um, I will highlight the email addresses within admissions and the telephone campus uh, so that you can confirm in advance and have that peace of mind that you're on the right track as well, Abigail. Um, good question here, actually, which is one I would say um, is actually good to know for preparing your personal statement. And then, of course, any subsequent questions that you have to answer in the second statement is what personal qualities would you look for? Within social work? Somebody who, so uh, when applying, somebody who can demonstrate honesty and as a good reflector and think, you know, because a lot of students that come in um, at the minute, especially school leavers, they don't realise the wealth of experience and knowledge and insight they have, even if it's working in a supermarket and how they deal with difficult customers every day. So it's using that experience. And I would go out and talk to students in schools and I would say, understand that you have a wealth of experience already, even though you're only 18. And if you are working in a nursing home or a care home, some of the things that they've done already. So it's about understanding that and being able to articulate that. So that's yeah, a good there's, there's a huge amount of confidence in there for our applicants. So, I mean, I, I'm out of schools all the time and you know, through sport, through your part-time work, through family situation, yeah. you'll develop empathy, confidence, organizational, um, skills you know problem solving skills uh, above all but and that allows you then to articulate any questions that may be posed to you in an interview for example confidently uh, yeah there's one of the things that um that i always find that when we are interviewing uh people for social work we're assessing potential we're not we don't want you to know all the ins and outs of everything but it's the potential so that's important but I think that a lot of students do a lot of work around, even if it's local sports clubs or gear guides and things like that, they're very relevant. You know, I bring students on the interview and I would say to them, what skills do you think? And they go, I don't know. And I says, do you work anywhere? And they'd say, I work in a busy supermarket. And I says, well, what kind of skills do you use? Time management skills, working in a team, um, dealing with difficult people, following direction. So them's all things that can be applied to social work. Yeah, and it's a, I think it's for, it's for applicants, for people in general to understand what skills uh, and what values and, uh, and what competencies that come out of, you know, even uh, what they're picking up during study. 
you know, uh, independent learning skills uh, and time management, uh, uh, all those things are very important, uh, especially in the application, the likes of social work as well. Um, can you say a little bit more about the interview process? Yes. Um, the way they're moving towards it now is that um, what we're going to do is that once you do your, your UCAS personal statement and we assess them, then you invite me for an interview. The interview um, up until this year was six questions. You're invited for an interview and before you come into the interview room, you're given like a, a small case scenario and then you're asked the first two questions on the case scenario. They might ask you what kind of things stood out and what kind of values would, would you approach this with? Um, and then we ask different questions. One of the questions might be, what, what skills do you think you would need to be a social worker? Uh, another question might be, what is your understanding of the training and social work? So we want you to know maybe the type of stuff that I presented here today, um, what, what subjects you study, do you understand that it's a three-year degree and there's two placements, one of them's 85 days, one of them's 100 days. So if you're coming on to a degree course, a, particularly a professional degree course, we want you to know the ins and outs of it. And, then, um, yes. and just to follow up on that, uh, that would be, I suppose, relevant, um, maybe not. Um, uh, do you require specific work experience and knowledge prior to the course? And if so, how and would it help? You don't have to have specific uh, experience because people think they have to have worked in a care and profession and stuff like that. You don't have to have that. That may be an advantage when you're talking about particular things when you're interviewing. So... And again, it's about using your experience to maybe transfer those skills and understand how those skills can work within social work. But there's one of the things I always suggest that people do is maybe talk to a social worker and get an understanding of what they do. Because if you come to an interview and you're able to, to talk about that, it, it gives you a very good insight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned uh, criminology, sociology, and social policy as degrees that you can get into social work with. Um, the accelerated program, do you accept any other subjects apart from these? No, there has to be a third of that previous degree that's relevant to social work. Um, so it could be early year studies and things like that. So if you're coming with a business studies degree, no, it doesn't work. If you're coming with an engineering degree, no, it won't apply to it. The reason, uh, you know, because it's a, it's a compacted degree, so any students that we have on it have a, a relevant insight on the people, behaviours, problems, social policy. So they're able to, to jump right on and, and start on the, uh, like a two-year fast-track degree because they have that background knowledge. Super. And how many, how many days or hours do or would uh, an, a student attend classes full-time in the full-time route? Sorry. The three-year full-time route, um, in the first year, it's probably about three and a half days a week. Um, but you have to understand that when you're out in placement, it's five days a week, Monday to Friday, 95. However, some students may be placed in residential settings, like residential children's homes, so you might have to work on a shift. So it's normally three, three and a half days a week. Brilliant. Um, and of course, one of these questions here, which I don't know if we can even answer yet, because we're still waiting on, uh, I suppose, announcements from Stormont and Westminster. Do you think universities will be back to normal come September and we will be on campus, or do you think we'll be studying online due to COVID-19? Right. The way it is at the minute is that we are planning for students to be on campus in September. Our current students don't finish until next week, so we've been teaching online since March. And we have been doing it. We've been doing it very effectively. We've been having one-to-one -one tutorials. But again, as you mentioned, Jonathan, we don't know. We don't know what the government's going to announce on Monday, never mind what they're going to announce for September. So if it does, we're going to plan around it um, and plan to keep everybody safe. Um, because nursing is in the same position, so is medicine and all other degrees. But um, so we're planning to be there in September. Yeah, and uh, last few questions. Uh, will the second statement be longer required for 2021 entry? Oh, sorry, no longer required? Yeah, that's, that's the plan at the moment. There's not going to be that second statement requirement. Okay, super easy uh, answer. Um, what minimum degree classification in a relevant degree do you require for the fast track? 
Oh, I, I think it's any degree classification. There's no, there's, you know, so somebody's got a third or a 2-2 two, two or a 2-1 or a first, I don't think, as long as they have a degree. Yeah, I think you'd be eligible to apply, of course, then the consideration as a successful candidate may depend on the classification or, or, or other um, factors, yeah. I would suggest as well. Um, and I think we've got a last one here. You said that the interview process is changing. Can you give us an insight into any potential changes? The interview process? Yeah. At the minute, um, all, our, all our interviews were face to face. We had to change them in the middle of COVID-19 to online. So I don't know um, what's going to happen after September. Or are we going to be told we can go back to face to face interviews? Yeah, I suppose you could argue you, you mean you, you like to see people in person. It's it's a different dynamic on Zoom or on on, on yeah. FaceTime or whatever. And that's the decision I think admissions and the department will decide. Uh, yeah. of course, as well. Look, Sean, that's all the questions answered uh, to date. Um, I'm just going to run through a last couple of slides here um, before uh, we sign off. Yeah. Things, if I can. Um, Thank you, everyone. Uh, just before we go back to Sean, and it's just, guys, just to uh, reinforce and reiterate that you can search for all course content, um, modules, entry requirements uh, that we have for all of our programs, including social work, on our website and, and on that you'll see a, a very definitive breakdown of content modules and videos like the one we showed you there with uh, James Nesbitt and videos from our current students and staff talking about social work and all of our other programs and um, again if there's any queries about qualifications um, you can contact us in the contact section, section and our admissions department will be only too glad to come back to you uh, with the answer especially if you're if you're concerned about at your current um, suite of qualifications that you're doing and their eligibility as well. Um, we have a whole range of other webinars um, over the next couple of weeks and they are all on our ulster.ac.uk forward slash events or webinars section of the website and that includes everything from sport, uh, subject specific, how to apply to UU, um, the personal statement um, and that will grow over the next couple of weeks as we work through the lockdown. And we'll probably um, add this to our, I suppose, um, our offering uh, going forward as well. Uh, our open days to date are still going ahead. Of course, this could go virtual, um, or we may, again, augment our, 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 our marketing and promotion of our courses as well. Um, but at the moment, our open day dates there, as you can see from the campus, uh, Friday the 18th of September. Now, at the moment, uh, very specifically for schools and colleges, um, we typically get them to register first uh, and then we'll open up the student registration afterwards. That allows you then to plan your day uh, in terms of talks, tours, etc. Everything that we have on offer for that particular open day. Uh, on whatever campus that you're interested in coming to, hopefully social work for this particular case. Um, admissions at McGee campus, that's the telephone number there, 028 um, or you can admit our email admissions at ulster there's a big team there that will get back to you very quickly on any questions that you have. If you have any course inquiries, you can contact us at study at ulster.ac.uk. And a very good uh, facility there is to use or to speak to our students through Unibody. So you'll find somebody on there who is studying uh, social work and you can ask them questions. Uh, obviously, they have, they're currently within uh, that setting now, so they can talk about their experience, why they chose social work, maybe where they came from. Um, what their career aspirations are, and that will help you uh, make an informed decision uh, for your uh, future as well. Um, okay, I'm just going to double check in case there are any other questions we missed out on just before we sign off. Um, and oh, yes, sorry, there was one very last one, which was one of the first questions that came through there, uh, Sean. It was somebody who had applied but didn't get through uh, on the reserve list and unsuccessful. Is there any chance that they could? Um, be contacted again later down the line, um, you know, following the results in August. Is that something that's happened in the past? I don't know because I know that we have quite a number of um, applicants and quite a number of people interviewed, so I don't know where, where they would be. But I would continue to contact admissions 
and just to see, you never know. Yeah, that's something I think, and obviously it's slightly different this year because of COVID-19, um, predicted grades, AS levels, A levels, BTECs, and how they're going to uh, predict those grades. I think there's been a lot of uh, talk at the moment, this moment in time. So, and then of course, uh, people have to decide whether they're gonna still go to university as well. So it, it's worth, it's maybe worth come August time uh, when we have clearing vacancies and so on, uh, in terms of keeping in touch with the university and find out if there are any uh, spaces. Um, it is a very competitive program, uh, obviously the interview process and first statement statement, uh, of course, gives you evidence of that, but it's, it's always worth asking come the time anyway. Okay, folks, that's all the questions answered. Um, uh, it's quarter past, or just after quarter past two, so the webinar will finish. And I'd just like to say thank you to uh, Sean for his time today. I hopefully you've enjoyed the webinar. Uh, this will be, this has been recorded. It will be uh, available on the website for you to watch again, and we will send you a copy of the presentation having registered as an attendee today. Um, and of course, the last thing is to say, of course, at this moment in time, is to stay safe. Um, and hopefully we'll see you at Ulster University in September 2021. Goodbye. Thanks.